This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. We're hooping it up. BYU Sports Nation is a go in Studio B, your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wherever and however you're connected, welcome, friends. Alongside Cosmo's legal guardian, Jerem Jordan, I am merely Spencer Linton. Listen, the hardest thing is just communicating because he doesn't talk. So there's kind of this uh, cougar sign language that we have that to communicate. It's mostly a bunch of growls and he hands me cougar tails if he's happy. <laughs> it's kind of a weird deal, but it, it works. What happens when he's angry? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't want to say. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that tail gets going. It's wild. Okay, okay. Uh, I await the book at a future date. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Cosmo Sign Language yes. Co- featuring a forward by Spencer Linton, the life of Jerem Jordan yes. with his pet. Cosmo <laughs> tails all. <laughs> You're right. That was so bad. Oh, my goodness. Today, uh, we move on and focus on the best of the past decade in BYU basketball. We'll, we're calling it our BYU Sports Nation all-decade BYU basketball we're not, team special. We're not saying it. We're declaring we're de- it. We are declaring Michael it. Michael Scott, let's yes. go. Okay. So, And we, we put in a lot of work to come up with this list, Jeremy. Yes, we gathered our BYU Sports Nation research staff. There are a ton of these people. I think our staff is, what, 20 yep. minus 18 or something. Extensive notes, closed balloting, some of the top players between 2010 and 2019. Things we took into consideration, the criteria, if you will. Accomplishments at BYU, yes. duh. Iconic moments at the BYU. Hero moments. And careers after Brigham were taken into account as well. Hey, speaking of those iconic moments, why don't we rehash a few of those? about BYU basketball over the past decade. And who can forget in January of 2011? Mm. Mark Durant called it the greatest half of any BYU basketball player ever. Jimmer Fredette goes for 32 points, including a half-court buzzer beater at the Huntsman Center, and then walks off the court like, all right, guys, uh, why are we only up by 11? I'm under the hoop on the right, right there, and I got this great shot. Why aren't we using my shot from under the basket is my real question. I don't know. Why are we using the mountains footage? Yeah, this is, this is SD. It's like super blurry. <laughs> was that even Jimmer? How do we even know that? No, that was a great game. Of course, he, uh, he goes nuts in that. And that was kind of the beginning of the Jimmer mania ball rolling. He had gone for 49 the year before, but in this game he goes nuts, right? 47 points. 47. After that, it was like, okay, the ball just kept rolling down the mountain. It was an avalanche of awesome. It was was amazing. Other iconic moments. BYU's incredible win at number one and then undefeated Gonzaga in the regular season finale. The Zags had already printed the newspapers that said 30-0. Yes, they did. 30-0. BYU trailed 18-2 in this game, by the way, to start. Everyone, you have to have the you have to play perfectly to beat a number one. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yoli Childs was hurt. He played sparingly in this game as a freshman off the bench. Eric Mika and TJ Haas. Finest moments, in my opinion, was that. BYU beats Gonzaga, and then you had the newspaper headline, 29 and no. Or was it, and don't. Dope. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Yeah. BYU any, didn't any get into the, the NCAA wins. tournament, but that was, that was a great one. I mean, no any doubt, of BYU's no three wins yeah. in the kennel. I shaved my head on the first one. Could be an iconic moment. You went to the game last year, but they didn't, didn't win. Out. So yeah, clearly, I, I've got to go. I don't have the same magic year. in the Northwest that Jerem Jordan does. I've got to go. Yoli Childs dunk heard round BYU Sports Nation oh, against Utah so good. in December of 2018. TJ Haas, great a, pass. Yoli Childs, grinder. better dunk. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is an old-timer, as Mark Durant said in the moment. Yeah. So good. And that was collectively BYU uh, exhaling some frustration in football, the Pac-12 Indy West Coast Conference thing. Oh, we at least had that moment, right? Oh, we at least had that one. That was one. a great week. BYU beat Utah State and Utah in the same week. Well, get used to it. Yoli with the throwdown in the Royal Blues all over that red. Fantastic yeah. aesthetics there. That, that uh, clash is like, you know, Sith Jedi kind of deal, <laughs> blue red. I think it's awesome. And most recently, TJ Haas with a buzzer beater against a very good Houston team on the road to give BYU a huge win without here's, Yoli. Here's Charles. what it sounded like on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> We were all doing that noise. We were yes. all making that noise. Yes. That was a cathartic moment for all of us through TJ. Jason Shepard and Mark Durant. Mark hugging TJ right after. Yeah. 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 Ooh. 
That was a great moment. That was a great win for BYU Hoops, one that they're going to carry through to Selection Sunday this year. Great moment for TJ Haas because he's been one of the best point guards that BYU's had, like top 10 point guard in BYU history. It's been awesome to see him have that moment. That was great. Yeah, and there are several other iconic moments. It's only an hour show, so yeah, we can't it's only cover an hour. all of them. We're already five minutes into this. And I know some introduced... people are saying, hey, what about Jimmer embarrassing Gonzaga? BYU going back to the Sweet 16. We could do, do the whole amazing. show on Jimmer. Yes. And maybe we will do a whole show a on Jimmer. Top 10 Jimmer show. This is the all-decade show. That is yeah. not the day, or today is not the day for that, but maybe down the line for sure. Uh, as we begin our look into the all-decade BYU basketball team, it is worth pointing out that six of the top 15 scores in BYU history mm-hmm. make our squad in the last decade. Tempo and uh, three-point line. That's what I say to that. Three-point revolution. Let's, that start, helps. let's start the conversation with the player that you know is going to be there. We've said his name like 17 times already in the first few say minutes it all of the show. Everyone together. Ready? Jimmer Fredette. Otherwise known as James, James Taft Fredette. Uh, Jimmer Mania was the biggest thing since, I don't know, like uh, sliced bread or the wheel or whatever. This was a big deal. Past the all-time leading score, Danny Ainge, in the same, uh, he had the single game record, 52 points, in the same game where he passes Danny Ainge. That was pretty cool. He was Ty Detmer, but with social media in play. Amen to that. Yes, exactly. If Ty was throwing 50-yard passes consistently on every play, right? 11th most points in a season in D1 history, by the way. 1,068. Pete Maravich has three in the top four, by the way. Uh, most 30-point games of BYU. Six 40-point games. Six. Six. Most threes made by BYU Cougars. Second best free throw percentage. And most people don't know this fact, Spencer. Fifth in assists and fifth in steals. Jimmer passed the ball? Of course he did. His first three years he did, yes. Jimmer played defense? <laughs> and that, Now, there's an argument with steals that if you get steal, that doesn't mean you necessarily created the steal, right? Steal's a weird deal. You poke it out, and I grab it, I get the credit for that. But, Jimmer Fredette, top five in points, steals, and assists, not bad. I remember the night I heard that Jimmer Fredette scored 49 points against Arizona, and BYU handed the Wildcats their worst home loss in the history of the arena, and I thought, who is this Jimmer Fredette guy? I mean, we knew he was a good player and he could score, but he was first team all league as a sophomore. 49 points at Arizona. At that point, I was like, Okay, maybe BYU's got somebody special here. Because no one accidentally or in a, uh, no amateur scores 40. No. Like, you have to be incredibly skilled to have 40. And uh, that, was, that was kind of the first nod. The first nod where it, or inkling to that Jimmer would be Jimmer was when he had, like, 32 or 33 against Wake Forest, who was ranked sixth his sophomore year, in a, like, super – uh, hot Marriott Center yes, that night. That Wake Forest team had that, like four NBA guys on it. That night, it, it grows every, it, the number gets larger every time. Guys. I, think, I think it was three. Yes. Greatest NBA team ever. The whole Wake squad Forest. made the whole NBA. It was crazy. <laughs> BYU had three or four on the roster, right? Um, yeah. It, that night, I thought, whoa, who is this kid? He had like 32 as a sophomore. Can you imagine? Like Connor Harding this year having 32 against a top 10 team against Kansas or something, right? That didn't happen, but you'd go, whoa, 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 what? That was the first time I thought Jimmer may be different. Jimmer Fredette, first team All American, National Player of the Year across multiple oh, yeah, platforms. Oh, yeah. Got BYU to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 30 years. Got them there without Brandon Davies because of that whole situation. Jimmer carried that team. Incredible. 52 points in a game against New Mexico. Noah Hartsock said, you know, the, the great quote that, uh, you know, I'll bring up later uh, <laughs> from that game. It was, awesome. it was awesome. Now, the one thing that Jimmer does not have, Jerem, is the title of all-time scoring leader at BYU. Wild, right? That honor belongs to the next member of our all-decade BYU Sports Nation basketball team, Tyler Hawes. Some people don't know this still. It may be news to you that Tyler Hawes passed Jimmer Fredette in points. Tyler Hawes is the best mid-range shooter in BYU history. Tremendous score. Uh, improved on his three-point range as time went on. He played the exact amount of games that Jimmer did, by the way, and had 121 more points. 0.8 points per game more than Jimmer. Eighth in made threes. First in free throw percentage by 1 100th over Jimmer, by the way. It's that close. Tied for ninth in steals. First in 20-plus point games. And listen to this. I did not know this until we got ready for the show. Of all the players in the history of the NCAA scoring, Tyler Haas is 20th in career points. Whoa. Are you kidding me? We're not doing a stat of the day today, but that's the one. 20th in NCAA history in points. Tyler Haas was taken for granted, and I knew that we would all feel this way when he left because 
It was just easy. And Terry Nashif it looked is, easy. Deserved, he deserves some credit here because he designed the offenses that got Tyler Haas a lot of these shots. They found ways to let him score the basketball. BYU's offense was really dynamic and really uh, strategic. And just it was just very clever, a very clever offense with Tyler Haas. He could score in a myriad of ways, but we, we took him for granted. And then he was gone, and I was like, oh, man, uh, we're, we're filling the void here. Because you could just count on it, 20 points a night. He was it, well, so he'll score consistent. 20 points a night. Three seasons of 20-plus. And the only reason he doesn't as a freshman is because he's a freshman and he's playing with junior Jimmer Fredette and junior Jackson Emery and so on. But, and, but Tyler Haas fit into that uh, mold. At the Mountain West Conference Championships his freshman year, he got hit in the eye. And it was so bad that he could barely see. Yet he went up to the line, and I'm pretty sure he made both uh-huh. of those free oh, throws. Yeah. Like, he was so good. And so, he put in so much time. And he even kind of coached up his younger brother, who has become a top 15 scorer in BYU history, which is incredible. More on that coming up. Uh, and TJ, of course. And then Dad Marty, a, a legacy family. What would Bill Walton say about the Haas family? Oh, there has never been a greater basketball family than the Haas. <laughs> Seven <laughs> players, all All-Americans. Incredible. <laughs> and Wake Forest's entire team was <laughs> in the NBA later. Yeah, wait a minute. Tyler Haas, he went for his 40-plus game against Virginia Tech on a neutral court. Yes, yes, he did. Virginia Tech, a good team to beat if you're BYU. Yeah, it's, it's happened amen. that season. Happened amen this season. Amen to that. But hey. I, yeah, Ty, and we should point out, Tyler Haas was on that team that ended the NCAA streak for BYU. He helped BYU yes. beat Florida in 2010 with Jimmer. Yes, his freshman season. Then he went on a mission trip, and he missed Jimmer Mania. Ugh. In the Philippines. Okay. okay, now to the other guys in the top 15 in scoring, and also on our list, Kyle Collinsworth, Brandon Davies, Yoli Childs, and TJ House, two current fellas. Uh, yeah, let's start with Kyle Collinsworth, though, Jerem. Mr. Triple-Double. Really? I didn't know that. Big rush of five. NCAA record holder for triple-doubles. Kyle Collinsworth Get your hoodie today. went to the NCAA tournament in three of his four years at BYU. That is good because right now BYU doesn't go to the NCAA tournament. And he let's hope they do this year. On the Sweet 16 team, he played an integral part on that Jimmer Fredette team as a forward. They asked him to be a big man on that team, and he had to play that role, especially when Brandon Davies wasn't on the team late in the season. Against Florida, he had 16 rebounds. Holy cow. Yeah. He missed some critical free throws down the stretch, but I didn't want to bring it up. Okay, but NCAA tournament three out of four years, and the one year he didn't go, BYU went to the NIT Final Four. Yeah, so th- no, this is I, – I would argue that Kyle is the most versatile player in BYU history. Obviously, right? Triple-double. Came uh, back from an ACL tear, and he yes. was better? Yes, he was better. 11th in points, first in rebounds, first in assists. How, how are you first in rebounds and assists? Like, what guy does that? That's Mr. Triple Double insane. Yeah. Second in steals, by the way. Um, you could, I mean, you could cobble those together and argue that he's the best overall player. I, mean, I, I would say that Jimmer is the best, uh, second best player that BYU's ever had. I would say Danny Ainge is the GOAT. Uh, but Kyle Collinsworth is in the conversation. You could argue from a versatility standpoint. He was, he was unbelievable. And it was fun, right? You're playing this meaningless game against Pacific in January. You're walking out and scraping ice off your car. Life just stinks. It's dark too early. But you know what the light at the end of the tunnel is? That Kyle Collinsworth may have nine rebounds. And you're waiting for that 10th <laughs> rebound. Woo! Everyone's going crazy. People are going nuts. Yeah. It was a thing. It was a storyline. Kyle Collinsworth is the next man. Mr. Triple Double. Okay. Brandon Davies, 12th in points, 7th in rebounds, 6th in blocks. He came back to BYU. He didn't have to. He could have oh, left. And what a pure big man. You think about And he's become just, way better yes, as a pro, by the way. He's had an incredible professional career. He played in the NBA. Don't forget that. He had a dream to play in the NBA. Trust and the process? Was on, that was with Brandon Davies. He was on a tanking 76ers team, but he got there, yeah. and he contributed. And now he is a stud in European basketball. I still think he had the purest post moves of any big man in BYU history, Jerem, he was so smooth in the post. We knew him as a freshman in high school when we called his games at Provo High on iProvo, iProvo for life. Uh, Brandon Davies was a good player, and BYU always had a shot with him in the game. Nearly took down t- top 10 Baylor at home the weekend that Robert Griffin III had uh, won the Heisman, right? A three-point attempt from Brandon. Um, there, Yeah, he was really good. Yoli Childs. As a big man, makes our list uh, because he's been unbelievable. And it's uh, nine-game suspension this year certainly hurt his aim at getting uh, some of the 
accolades in the end, like number one in rebounding. He was pacing to totally do it. We'll see if he does it. 14th in uh, top 15 in points, top five in rebounds, top five in blocks, 40, 30 point games for Yoli Childs. He is one of the best big men in, in BYU history. He's one of the top 15 or 20. Yeah, you mentioned versatility from Kyle Collins. With Yoli Childs is trying to make his game more versatile, be a defensive star. We know he has inside game. He's worked really hard to stretch the defense out on his three-point shot. Yoli Childs has a shot to make it at the next level. It's uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but he's got a shot. Well, next level for sure. To You're be talking an NBA. NBA. Yeah, he's okay. got a yeah, shot yeah. to be an NBA player. And I just like everything that he brings to the game. Uh, and I like his... His versatility on the defense side, his vertical spacing. Vertical he's, spacing. He's our nice. lob guy, right? He's the dude that you throw it up and he dunks hard. It just feels like he's limited by calling him that, though. He, I know what you're saying, but he, he is tremendous uh, as a player. BYU has done a nice job with him. I hope this season for T.J. Haas and Yoli Childs that BYU can get to an NCAA tournament. Because uh, for Jake Toulson and whatnot... If you, don't, if you go your whole career and you don't make the tourney once, that's tough. And we value that in our conversation here. Sure, um, yeah. And, and if Yoli Childs and TJ House had made a tournament or two, maybe they're higher on this list, right? And, and it's not necessarily in the order, although we did Jimmer and Tyler, the two best scores in BYU history initially. Yoli Childs is, is tremendous. Jackson Emery is on this list uh, oh, man. as well. we'll I mean, get, they might not be top 15 scores, right. but... We'll, and we'll get to Jackson, but TJ Haas... T.J. Haas continues to climb the charts as well uh, with this group. Top 15 in scoring, one of six players in BYU history with 200 made threes. Top 10 in assists. He, he, he has, I almost want to say he's done it quietly. T.J. Haas hasn't missed a, a, a game as a Cougar. That's incredible. For the most part, right? Like, it, the Wizard of Haas. I, I like that. That's good. <laughs> the, 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 the Ginger Mamba. The Ginger Mamba. We like to call him. Yes, the Ginger Mamba, T.J. Haas. When he's on the floor... BYU is a better, more creative basketball team. Like, there's one guy that I feel okay with dribbling around a lot on yes. the floor right now, yes. and it's TJ Haas. Because he's he, the only one. He attracts attention, and then, bang, he's throwing it to a guy, no look, for an easy layup. Or he can dribble into a big-time three-pointer. TJ Haas, when he has the ball in his hands, BYU basketball is better. He is a pure creator with the basketball. I don't think there's really anybody else like this on the list. Jimmer Fredette is a scorer with the basketball. TJ Haas is a different type of player. He is a creator with the basketball, both as a passer and a scorer. He can do a lot of things. He's a unique player. How dare you disparage Jimmer in I'm any way, shape, or form? You know what I'm Lincoln. saying? He is a scorer with the basketball first. I don't think TJ Haas is that player, but he can be. Yeah. He can go for 30, but he can also go for 15 assists. TJ Haas is still climbing. The assist chart behind Jimmer. Just keep that in okay. mind. All okay. Right. Just All keep right. that in mind. Okay. Granted, Jimmer had like every possession in his hands. <laughs> There's that too. Yes. <laughs> the the usage rate was high. Okay. Now for some guys again that are not top 15 scorers. You already brought up one, Jackson Emery, the defensive mm-hmm. MVP on this squad. Chase Fisher, three point sharpshooter, straight out of West Virginia. Elijah Bryant. I wish. Oh, I wish he would have stayed one more year. And Eric Mika. How I wish he would have stayed two more years. But those We're are the next four again. on our list, Jerem. Okay, Jackson Emery, 27th in scoring, 38 percent three point shooter, lockdown defender, number one in steals in BYU history. That is his greatest attribute in this conversation. Is that Jackson Emery? is the best perimeter defender perhaps in BYU history. He played a great Robin to Jimmer's Batman. If you ask Jackson, he would say he's Batman and Jimmer is Robin. That's a conversation for another day. He was on the second best team in BYU history. The 81 Elite Eight team, to me, is the greatest team of all time. The 2011 Sweet 16 team is the second greatest team. And Jackson Emery and Jimmer Fredette had three years in that backcourt together. There's a reason that BYU was so good those three years. It's because you have Jimmer and Jacks together. Two steals a game. You can guarantee two steals, a two game. steals per game. And those game. are his steals most of the time, by the way. Like I talked about. Out not, on the perimeter. Not you poking yeah. it out and I grab the ball. Anticipation. It's him getting the ball. And then he goes down for that two-footed dunk. Yeah. His signature dunk. Yeah, Jackson Emery, super athletic and uh, the best defensive player on our all-decade team and for listen, sure. We're going to roll out our starting fives. You're going to need Jackson Emery in that crew because there's a lot of offense here. He, Defensively, he might be, it might be yeah, a little he tough. He might be first off the bench. First <laughs> off the bench. Chase Fisher. And a lot of people forget just how deadly this guy was from beyond the three-point line. He came in and in two seasons. Did he shoot a two at BYU? I didn't, uh, I'm unaware. Made over 200 three-pointers at BYU. I, it, he was 
he reminded me a little bit of that Jimmer effect. Oh, he look, take, he shot it too. Okay, there's he one. He would take gotcha. some deep threes and never a hesitation. Super confident shooter. And so people say, oh, Jim, Jimmer effect. And then against Chaminade. Oh, these are three twos. Wow, he shot a lot. He makes 10 three-pointers in a game against Chaminade. Everyone makes 10 threes against Chaminade. No, no they don't. <laughs> Chase Fisher out of West Virginia, the transfer from Wake Forest. I loved his trash talking, loved his accent. He was a fresh take on BYU basketball. If you need a big-time shot late in the game, he's your guy. Number one in BYU history in threes made per game. Okay, that's saying a lot. He made 215 in two years. What if he had played all four years here? Remember Wake Forest transfer? There's a little connection there with oh, yeah. Mark, Mark Pope, Pope there, right? Yep. Fourth in total threes made. That's in two, two seasons. Years. Um, top 15 in scoring average, by the way. Scoring average. And one of 10 players in BYU history with a 40-point game. So there you go. Yeah, Chase Fisher had a 40-point game. Was it against Sean? I assume it was against Sean. <laughs> okay, Elijah Bryant. Only really saw him peak for about a year and a half. Came off a red shirt. Um, this was still battling kind of knee issues in the offseason. Got a scope, I believe. That next season, his junior year, 18 points a game. We talk about the 180 thing, right? If you combine with free throw field going three-point percentages, he got to 175.9. Um, all West Coast Conference player, 85 made threes that year. He became such a, just a knockdown shooter. Elijah Bryant, and I remember this after the Portland game when he went nuts and made a bunch of threes early in the game, and he and Yoli Childs were joking because uh, some BYU fans and some BYU commentators had mixed up their names. But he said, hopefully this uh, helps people remember that I'm Eli and he's Yoli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, that's like a deeper conversation that's kind of weird, right? Elijah Bryant. I Seriously, love those guys. I, if he had stayed another year. Don't, well, don't do it. I know. Don't do the it. The hypothetical game. It stinks to think about, but that's what we do. This is supposed to be a fun, loose, flowing, energetic show. Don't bring it up. Yeah. No, yeah, no you're right. Terry Nashif. I mean, you talk to any of the coaches. Like when Eli was redshirting, and they'd always say, you, you just need to watch Elijah Bryant. When he's going to play, he's really good. He embarrasses our team in practice. And he embarrassed, he embarrassed, embarrassed many uh, West Coast Conference foes as well. He, he was very focused, and, and now he's doing great things in uh, Israel professionally, right? Like you said, would have loved to have him for another year. Left uh, doing his thing, doing his, doing his vlog, right, uh, on, on has his YouTube channel. Very focused, a guy that came from Elon, kind of small school uh, in the South, and had a major impact. And his middle name is Brigham. That's one of my favorite things about yes. him. His middle name is Brigham. A couple of things about Eli Bryant. He helped BYU climb over the hill after losing three straight to Utah basketball. And he helped BYU beat St. Mary's in Las Vegas to get to the championship game. That game was awesome. And then you f- I forgot that BYU had to play Gonzaga. No, no, but no. it was awesome for a day. Two-point game at great. halftime against Gonzaga. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. Losers Woo. talk about margins. Uh-huh. Okay. How about Eric Mika? Speaking of guys that left a little bit earlier. Yes. Eric Mika is one of the few players in BYU history to have a 20-point a game and nine rebound or more season. Eric Mika did that his sophomore season. And, yes, did leave early. Had he stayed, perhaps we would have seen the Lone Peak 3 blossom. They didn't. That's another show. Eric Meek was so fun. Just a dunking machine, the goggles, the block, beating Gonzaga, the tremendous post moves. Didn't have much of a kind of extended jumper. Hit it from the 15-foot range, but he's extended that out now as a pro, which is awesome. Played in Italy, played in Germany, played in the G League, now in China. Um, summer League in the NBA. Never quite got to the NBA. Hopefully at some point he does that, but he, he was a guy that came in with a lot of hype, and he answered. He answered his freshman year before his mission and his sophomore year especially. 20.3 points per game, shot 53%, 76% from the free throw line, nine boards a game. He was awesome. As amazing as that win at number one rank Gonzaga was in 2017, I think that was uh, the real push-button start for Eric Mika to go pro. And so that, it shouldn't have happened? If no, it didn't no, happen, no, he would have come back? I, maybe. That would have been the sacrifice. That team was one and done in the NIT, so yeah. who cares? Yeah, may, maybe. Can we go back in back time to and get him to come back <laughs> his junior year? You don't, you don't want to end he, Gonzaga's perfect season on their senior day? No, it was awesome. That was right. amazing. It was awesome. But if I could have him come back for his junior year, I just loved that when Eric Mika was in the game, BYU matched up with any big man in the country. I kid you not. It, throw any guy, Duke, Kansas, you, whoever. Eric Mika could have matched that as a sophomore on. 
And so that's why it was so disappointing to see him go. And we were all kind of surprised that, that happened at all. But uh, his, his sophomore year, tremendous season. I'd argue one of the best big man seasons in BYU history. Yeah, going back over the last 20, even 25 years, I was thinking about all of the great BYU big men and Hafa Araujo and Mikelly Wesley and Trent Playstead and Kena Young, Brandon Davies and Eric Mika, in terms of just pure big men, footwork, passing, shooting, those two are the guys. Yeah. Those two are the guys, not just in the last decade for me, but the last 25 years. It's a fun conversation because all those guys have some extreme value yeah. to their teams. Good times. Yeah. All right. Those okay. are your 10 on the all-decade BYU basketball team. Coming up, does Greg Rubel agree with us on the all-decade team? And who would be his starting five? Ah, uh, yes. Who makes his starting five? Does he agree with me or with Jerem? Because there is a little bit of a difference. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Escucha. Listen to BYU Sports Nation On Demand on iTunes. Tune in or Google Play and enjoy On Demand and subscribe, rate, and review. We appreciate it. You can also mira, right? Mm-hmm. Escucha, mira. I, I, the extent of my uh, Spanish. Yeah, me too. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Should have taught me more. <laughs> Welcome back to our BYU Sports Nation all decade BYU basketball team special alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. We gave you the 10 players on the list, but who gets in each of our starting fives? Jerem, who's in your starting five on the all decade team? Uh, Jameer Fredette, okay. as he was called by one writer to us one day. Uh, Tyler Haas, Kyle Collinsworth, Brandon Davies, and Eric oh, Mika. Oh, I thought it was so going to be. Okay. I, was... I go big. I, I need uh, Eric Mika out there to protect the rim. Brandon Davies as well. I'm, go- I'm going with two fours, essentially. Kyle Collinsworth, one through three, right? I'm not asking Kyle to be uh, what he was at BYU. I'm asking him to mainly defend and get some offensive rebounds because guess what? Jimmer Fredette's going to have the ball in his hands and probably just shoot a three, okay? Tyler Haas is going to take the possessions when Jimmer gets a little tired. And uh, there. So here are my reserves. The other five, of course. T.J. Haas, Chase Fisher, Jackson Emery, Elijah Bryant, and uh, Yoli Childs. Okay. So you, And you've got your defensive specialist probably being your sixth man, right, Jackson Emery? Yes. Jackson Emery <laughs> is in my reserve team. Now, I thought about putting Jackson in the starting five just for defensive purposes, right? Jackson could also knock down a three. Like if Jimmer draws a double team on the perimeter, boom, Jackson on the wing. Oh, we saw that so many times. I feel like this matchup, by the way, of starters versus uh, reserves would be really close. I don't feel like there's this huge divide. Not a ton of separation? No. But Jimmer probably tips the edge, right? Probably. Because Jimmer (laughs) tipped all the edges every time, right? (laughs) My starting five has four of the five that you brought up. We only disagree on one position. So, uh, duh, yeah, Jimmer for dead. Mm -hmm. Starting guard along with Tyler Haas and Kyle Collinsworth. That backcourt is incredible, right? I'd put that up against anybody. And Kyle Collinsworth can play defense. Steals, rebounds. Like, he's a big guard. I like that. Joining Kyle Collinsworth, Haas, and Fredette, Yoli Childs Mm. and Brandon Davies are my bigs. I like the rim protection from Yoli. Again, his vertical spacing, his ability to uh, go out and defend and rebound. And I think Brandon Davies is so smooth at center. And uh, I, I won't go to the what if, but <laughs> you stop it. You stop with the what ifs because it just hurts. Yoli Childs and Brandon Davies are my bigs. Now my reserves, Eric Mika and Jackson Emery are probably my first two off the bench. Mm-hmm. Eric to give a spell to either Yoli or Brandon in some foul trouble. And Jackson Emery, if BYU is in uh, an offensive shootout and they need some defense lockdown defender, then Jackson comes in and shuts down an opposing scoring guard. This would be so fun to see these guys play. Now, what's fun is some of these guys have played pickup together. So in the summer, BYU will play these pickup games, and guys will come back. So Brandon Davies, uh, playing in Lithuania last summer, the last couple summers, he would come back, and he would run with these guys. Um, Some of the guys get too old. and Like, Jackson Emery right now is not going to hang because he's not laced them up uh, as frequently, right? But guys that are still playing professionally come back. And they have a chance to get up and down in that annex, which is awesome. And uh, it's pretty fun to watch some of those guys come back and yeah. just light it up. And, and guess what? It's, it's skins versus shirts. And uh, there's no uh, play. So Chase Fisher's going to shoot from like 40 feet away. Sure. Yeah, Chase Fisher will shoot from new. And Kyle Collinsworth will 100% of the time be on the skins team. Uh, that, that, <laughs> yes, that, he will. That will happen. Or wearing his triple do- double hoodie <laughs> with all the dates, which is pretty awesome. 
<laughs> he had more triple doubles than Shaq. You know, like and, and 10 it was, plus it blocks. Wasn't, it wasn't close. And it wasn't close. Man. I, he you had just, 12? Did he have 12? Yeah. I can't even remember. Was it 12? 12. 12 triple 12 doubles. triple doubles. Shaq had six, and then Kyle broke the record and then continued to break the record with each following triple double. What a fun period in BYU history the last 10 years. Now, the only thing that's missing for this crew, by the way, more NCAA tournaments and more wins in the NCAA tournament. Only one team out of this whole group won two games in the NCAA tournament. That's hard, right? W- winning two games is, I guess, difficult in the NCAA tournament. None of these teams won the... Mountain West or uh, West Coast Conference championships in the tourney. That's hard as well. These are things BYU needs to overcome, and it doesn't take uh, amazing players per se to do it. It just takes the right strategy. It takes the right shooting night. It takes the right you name it. St. Mary's did it against Gonzaga last year. Like, it can be done, and I'm looking forward to seeing if BYU can be its best in March and uh, get the monkey off the back of not winning those individually. And these teams were fun. They won conference championships in the Mountain West. We have yet to see that in the West Coast Conference. I imagine we might not see that until Mark Few leaves the conference. It's, that's, he's the commissioner, as I've called him. Yeah, an interesting point you bring up. Did any of these players have a winning record in the NCAA tournament? I don't think any of the players on our all-decade team had an overall winning yeah. record in the NCAA tournament. And that doesn't really matter to me. It's You can have one special season and be remembered forever. Like the Loyola Chicago guys that got to the Final Four, they're immortal there, you know what I mean, among that fan base? And it doesn't matter what else they do, even if they go to the tourney and lose one and done, da, da, da. As is Grandma Jean, or Sister Jean. Sister Jean. Yeah. Sister Jean, man, yeah. Who's the BYU Sister Jean? That's the real question. <laughs> there are a lot of Sister Jeans in the West It's got to be Elaine Michaelis, Football. right? It's got to be Elaine Michaelis. Yes. That's, Elaine Michaelis? That, that's probably, I love Elaine. I, I know, she's the best. She's in every match. She's There's awesome. a volleyball court named after her, for crying out loud. Now, now there's a, not a lot of facilities um, at BYU that have a woman's name on them. And it is notable that the court is named Elaine Michaelis Court. I think that's awesome. Okay, so to recap the starting fives, I go with Jimmer Fredette, Tyler Haas, and Kyle Collinsworth as my backcourt. That is the exact same as Jerem's backcourt. And in my front court, Yoli Childs and Brandon Davies. I are put the Eric men. Mika. And you've got Eric Mika over Yoli, Yoli Childs. Childs. And that's the only difference. And why did you opt for Mika over Childs again? I like uh, all of them, but I just <laughs> I just thought Eric I just wanted Eric Mika's versatility uh, to be able to the mid range jumper. I think he's I think he's one of the best low post scorers. I think that um, Yoli Childs is certainly a tremendous low post scorer as well. Yoli's strength is that he can draw you out as well. Both can rim protect. I just like Eric as like a six ten guy down there. I believe Yoli's what six eight. So just a he's not undersized, just a little short. I wonder Can't how many guys. Here. I wonder how many guys are going to compete against each other in the Euro League because now Jimmer Fredette's playing for Panathinaikos, yeah. and he could compete against Brandon Davies in Barcelona and and Maccabi Tel Bryant. Aviv and Elijah Bryant. Right. Like, is Eric Mika going to make his way to the Euro League at some point? Did Israel become a part of Europe all of a sudden? They're just in the Euro League, will, right? Yeah. Will Yoli Childs be playing in Euro League at some point? He hopes not. He hopes the NBA. He hopes not. I, I think that's probably where Yoli's going to go. Um, But I think the G League is certainly an option for Yoli Childs. And let's see how he continues to play this year. So far, so good. Okay, those are our starting fives. We still need to discuss our all-decade most valuable players, Jerem. And the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, will join us. Does he agree with everything we've said? I'm sure he has some other ideas. Uh, Yeah, did we leave an obvious name off the list? Is there somebody on this team? Gavin McGregor. Somebody not on our list? It should be. Raul Delgado. (laughs) Greg Rubel bringing his takes on this special. This is BYU Sports Nation. Augustine Ambrosino. Get out of here. My bad. We missed those guys. BYU Sports Nation keeping it real in Studio B. Welcome back to our BYU Basketball All-Decade Team Special. As always, you can listen to this episode or any episode of the show, for that matter, by downloading the podcast on your preferred platform. Now, if you missed it, let's run down the list for those just joining us. Jimmer Fredette, obvious. Come on. Jackson Emery. Brandon Davies. Don't call him Brandon Davis. Tyler Haas. Kyle Collinsworth. Don't call him Kyle Collinsworth. Chase Fisher, okay. Eric Mika, Elijah Bryant, TJ Hawes, and Yoli Child. So two of the ten are current players. Now joining us to analyze the top ten Cougar basketball players from the 2010-11 season through the 2019-20 season is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebel. Greg, welcome to Studio B. Hello, on such an Hello, guys. epic show. And Happy New Year. 
Yes. Happy New Year to you as well. <laughs> We've compiled a juggernaut of a team, Greg. But of those 10, who's in your starting five? Ooh, starting five. Hadn't thought about that. Um, I, I, I want to go uh, Jimmer. Mm-hmm. I want to go Kyle. Uh, I want to go Brandon. Uh, I want to go Yo. And... Eh, Tyler. Tyler, okay. Yeah. The all-time leading scorer of, rounds out the five. There's a lot yeah. of a lot going on in there. Yeah, and, and, I, 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 and that's just top of my head. I could have made a couple of substitutions really quickly there and still been pretty happy. But you yeah. still could after the tip. Just yeah. first dead ball. Just first dead ball. Bring in Chase Fisher. Bring in Elijah. Bring in, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah, whatever you need. Yeah. For the record, your starting five is my starting five. Oh, really? Well, good. Yeah. Now, yeah. I differ just a touch. Um, I had Eric Mika in there. I okay. think that Eric Mika is the best low post scorer you always had in a while. Granted, it's a fun argument between he and Brandon Davies, Mm -hmm. which this has been a very, uh, I guess, guard-heavy kind of offense the last several years. Yet BYU's produced some uh, quality bigs the last couple of years. Well, either way, if you went with uh, Yo and Brandon or Yo and Eric Mika as as, as your 4-5, you're in great shape no matter what. Uh, And and you could say that both Brandon and Eric have established themselves as professionals. Uh, Both play the games just a little bit differently. Uh, I guess I'm just a little partial to Brandon. He was a longer-duration guy. Uh, Eric played just the two seasons. And so I'm probably leaning uh, toward Brandon for that reason as well. But Eric's back in this situation. He's back. In the all-decade team, he's back. Oh, truly, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For his fifth season, yeah. or his third season in this case. Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation. What changes would you make, if any, on this team? Well, I just have a real tough time leaving out Noah Hartsock. Uh, he has a special place in my heart, and, and uh, he was a leading scorer. You, you take a look at the, uh, at, at the 10 seasons we're talking about, and, and he's the only guy that was a leading scorer for one of those seasons that not, that's not in the all-decade team. Uh, that, that first season post-Jimmer, he was the man. And that was a season two where people thought, well, Jimmer's gone, Jax is gone, what do they do? And, and Noah led that team and got them back to the NCAA tournament as well, let's not forget. And, and so I, I really have a tough time not finding a spot for Noah. Uh, he's a thousand point guy, uh, he was a four season guy. And again, t- I had to kind of carry BYU at a, at a spot where people were looking for the next answer. And uh, so I really am favorable. Uh, I, I, I favor Noah a lot. Uh, Matt Carlino is right there. I think if you look, if you look at the next two guys who didn't make the list, probably 11 and 12 are Noah and Matt. Uh, and Matt was a guy who wasn't, uh, wasn't a four-season guy. but was a three-season guy, but another 1,000-point score. Uh, a couple guys on this team are on the thousand, in the 1,000-point club after only two seasons, Chase Fisher and, and Eric Mika. Elijah never got there, but he got really close. He had two really productive seasons and, uh, and was just very shy, of the, just barely shy of the 1,000-point club. Noah Hartsock had one of the all-time quotes. So Jimmer Fredette goes off for 52 against New Mexico in the semifinals 2011. And I don't go to the press conference because I'm going to get some interviews that we're going to add to the press conference. So Noah Hartsock's the guy talking to everybody else. Like, no one's there because everyone wants to hear from Jimmer. So I say, Noah, what was it like to be out there for the – or what will you remember from this game? And he said, that Jimmer Fredette and I combined for 59 points. <laughs> <laughs> he had seven. Right. <laughs> he had seven. So he had a sense of humor as well, which yeah, is awesome. very witty, smart dude. Okay, and, again, you... and, just a good, and just a good guy. Yes. Great guy. Yes. Excellent yes. teammate. Uh, and I, I still remember him playing through stuff. Um, in particular – uh, the game at uh, at San Diego State, uh, the 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 one at the tail end of of uh, Jimmer's senior season, Noah was you know barely barely good to go and and played a really I, I thought a really key game for BYU. There. Oh, he hit some enormous yeah. shots in yeah. that game. Yeah. When you look at all ten on the all decade team, what do you like most about the list that we've compiled? Uh, versatility, uh, the fact that so many guys can do so many different things. Um, I, th- I think we're leaving Jackson out of the starting five, aren't we, right? So you're leaving one of the best defensive players ever off, <laughs> off the def- <laughs> off the, because you've got a Kyle Collinsworth who can do so yes. many different things. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, if you, if you had a guard line with, uh, with Jimmer and Kyle, you throw in Tyler as kind of that wing scorer, and then those two guys we talked about, if we went with uh, Brandon and, uh, and Yoli Childs, I mean, that's just so many guys that can do so many different things. Uh, tough to beat that group. Look at my reserve team and tell me what um, place they would take in the WCC this year. Okay, <laughs> TJ Haas, right. Chase Fisher, Elijah Bryant, Jackson Emery, and Yoli Childs. So a little small, but... Maybe Eli plays the four. Yeah. Do they take second to Gonzaga? Do they challenge Gonzaga? Uh, they're right there. Yeah. I, I think um, you, know, you might need one more big, big. Uh, to truly challenge, but I, I think out, you're right there. I throw out Elijah Brown. I throw in Brandon Davies. Now, that team I'm, win the league? No, no, I'm thinking a little okay. differently now. Yeah. Well, yeah. team yeah. wins the league. <laughs> Noah Hartsock if you want another big in Throw there. in Noah, right, yeah. for 11. That would be incredible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, this, hey, this is fun. And here's what impressed me the most about this era. Seven of these are guards. You know, you could put Kyle, uh, obviously Kyle Collins was very versatile, but 
Um, Dave Rose did a great job of developing all his players, but the guards, and I think four of the top 14 in BYU history are from this group. That's pretty notable, the way that Dave Rose and now Mark Pope are developing these guys. And, and the way that they could, um, you know, construct an offense around a key player. And and people might might wonder why certain players, after they leave, they leave BYU, don't have the same kind of success other places. I think it's because the coach did such a great job of saying, we're going to make the offense revolve around this player, get him the looks he has to get to make us win games. And that happened consistently over the last decade, last two decades. You've broadcasted some unforgettable moments over the last decade with these guys, and these guys producing a lot of those crazy I mean, just unbelievable performances or buzzer beater shots. What's the most memorable play-by-play experience you have featuring a guy from this all-decade team? Well, many Jimmer games became instantly memorable uh, for a lot of the different reasons, whether it's the number of points he scored, uh, the records he set, uh, the distance from which he shot. So, you know, a handful of Jimmer games come to the top of the list. Uh, we maybe talk about Noah, and I think about the comeback against Iona. In the that, that was not a Jimmer team. That was the year after Jimmer, right? Um, that was as memorable as it gets. Uh, when you're out, you're all the way out, and then you find yourself advancing to the next round. Uh, that was amazing. Kyle Collinsworth triple doubles. Every time you got close, that was a fun moment mm-hmm. uh, when, when something good was about to happen there. And, and the Gonzaga wins. Right since uh, you know since BYU joined the WCC, it was post Jimmer. Uh, some of the biggest wins for BYU have come up in Spokane, and so uh, those are some some that come to mind immediately. Uh, of course, you'd like to be say you're celebrating a conference championship, um, but that hasn't happened yet. And I think when that happens, that'll be the next big, big, big moment. Yeah. And perhaps the yeah the missing piece of kind of this is okay, getting over that hump. Yeah, I wonder if BYU is going to get a Jimmer for that in the future. I feel like technology has changed to where Jimmer is going to be on more radars um, now. This is like pre H. HD video. This is huddle and football has changed the game, right? I think BYU got Jimmer Fredette at the exact right time. And it was at the end of the Mountain West Conference era, and it was just an unbelievable season. I would hope BYU would, but I think technology is changing it to where Jimmer might be a bigger deal in nowadays. And it'll have to be a guy that, again, he wants BYU. It'll, it'll, have, it'll likely be an LDS kid that wants the BYU experience and is, and is amazing at basketball. Then you can kind of recreate that situation. I think it would have to be that kind of combination. Yeah, a, a, like a two or three star that had three D1 offers. Just BYU hit struck gold with that yeah, one, Yeah, wild. And again, he wasn't a starter his whole freshman year. He wasn't, he wasn't Jimmer until he was into his career, and BYU decided this will be the guy that we're going to that we're gonna build around, and they certainly did. Shouldn't the ben guy, Murdoch, what, shouldn't the, yeah, shouldn't yeah. Ben be on this list if yeah. he started over Jimmer? That's <laughs> yeah. crazy, right? Come on down. Yeah, the there senior are, season. There are a guy. lot of great things to pull from the fact that Jimmer didn't start any games as a freshman. Uh, it, it can be instructive for uh, any, any big time recruit you bring in, right? Uh, this may be feeling he's not being utilized uh, the way he'd like to. Is you know, you, you always bring up Jimmer and say, hey, you know who Jimmer was and is. He was a backup his whole freshman. Now, he wasn't necessarily happy to be the backup his entire freshman season, <laughs> but he was, and he came back, and he used it to build off of and, and become the player he was. Yoli Childs and TJ Haas are seniors for BYU basketball this season. They make the all-decade team. If you had to project about one of the underclassmen that are currently at BYU that would have a case at the end of their career to be on an all-decade type team, who's that player? Hmm. Um, uh. Gavin Baxter, probably, you know, because we're, we're, he's kind of out of sight, out of mind right now. Had a pretty solid freshman year. And, and if he has three healthy years after this, um, I, I, I think his combination of skills will be really beneficial to BYU. And, and that's just one that immediately jumps to mind. Um, I think Connor Harding is an all-around, you know, just solid, solid player. Um, but he's still a reserve, and he'll have had maybe two seasons as a, as, as, as a bench player should we get through this year that way. Um, this is going to be a, a senior-laden team um, and veteran-heavy team that, uh, that Mark Pope relies on to hopefully get him into the postseason. Now, here's a fun thought. If BYU goes to the NCAA tournament and say, let's win a game, and Jake Toulson plays a role in this, then does Jake Toulson maybe sneak into this <laughs> conversation as well? Depends how he finishes the season, yeah. right? Is that he, a strong he, would, he would have had two BYU years and then, uh, and then a third after his UVU career, right? He would have been a 1,000-point scorer if you include his UVU years. So, yeah, yeah. See what kind of year he Yeah, is. yeah, maybe he gets into the mix. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting thoughts. If you're barely off this list, you're still really good. These are all conference guys. And for the most part, again, everyone we're talking about, with the exception of Elijah, is a thousand point guy. And and again, Elijah was just barely close to it after two seasons, and two guys got there with just two seasons. But most of these guys are guys that, you know, really had to, um, you know, put up some serious numbers. Now, I seriously considered Nate Austin just because I love Nate. 
and uh, he's the all-time Listen, fouls leader. <laughs> offensive rebounds. You need a foul in a moment. You know what I mean? And no one Nate answered Austin. the bell more times than it. He's the career games played leader. The block right? at Gonzaga. So, healthy. Uh, Kyle Wilcher. Yeah. yeah. And he's still around. We still get to enjoy him. He's still around. And that's probably my favorite thing that we've ever done with this show is we, we summoned a sign from The Rock that had the foul countdown to when he set the record. <laughs> <laughs> to when he set the record, they were going crazy. That doesn't make your favorite. Uh, that can't be the favorite play thing play you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nate. We was, love Nate. That can't so be it. It was so weird. It was so weird. I loved it. Oh, that's My great favorite story. thing was matching haircuts with you. That was actually. Well, you favorite. know, yeah. something to shoot for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greg, we appreciate you joining us for my this pleasure. Uh, all great decade insight. special, yeah. man. Appreciate Fun it. Chat. Thanks, really guys. Fun stuff. Times, fellas. <laughs> Coming up, we unveil our all decade hoops MVP. And we'll unveil our all hoops non Jimmer MVP. Just gave it away but yes, it's pretty obvious. (laughs) This is BYU Sports Nation. (laughs) BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Now this is a show that Rowan Minson can get on board with. We have our all-decade team. We have our respecting starting fives in that all-decade team, but we have yet to name an official all-decade MVP. Jerem, would you like to do the honors? James Taft Fredette. Jimmer Fredette is, of course, the most valuable player, the best player, the most outstanding player, however you would like to couch it. Value, production, blah, blah, blah. Jimmer was the best. Now, there's no argument there, and I think we all agree, and we all know about Jimmer. So I think what we should do is... Uh, talk about a non Jim MVP. <laughs> like, remember in 2015 when the Hail Mary happened and we said, what's the second best play of the year? Because it's so obvious what yes. the play of the year is. Yes. Jim Fredette is obviously the all-decade MVP. So who is the non Jimmer MVP of the last decade in BYU Hoops, Spencer? This is really tough because there are four or five deserving candidates, but based on career resume and what he meant to each team that he was on, other than Jimmer, for me, it's Kyle Collinsworth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, amen. The most versatile player on the all-decade team, whether it be defense, rebounding, assist, and he was Mr. Triple-Double. He went to the NCAA tournament, as we brought up earlier in the show, three out of four years. He was on the Sweet 16 team. Yes, he was a freshman on that team, fresh out of Craig Drury's Provo High School squad. Uh, you mentioned the triple-doubles. We talked about it earlier in the show. 11th in points in BYU history. Somewhat surprising, right? 11th in points. I, I wouldn't say that Kyle was the most dynamic scorer, but you look back and go, well, actually he was 11th in points. He, he was a good scorer. Um, had a couple of threes in there, but didn't need he – could, he could finish with both hands. He could defend. I mentioned it. First in rebounds and assists, second in steals. You could argue that Kyle Collinsworth is the best overall, most versatile player in BYU history. Look at all the different things he could do. He's played in actual games in the NBA, albeit it was with a tanking Dallas Mavericks team, but he still sure. found his way to the league and contributed and did some nice things in actual games. Yeah, undrafted guy getting into the league, right? And uh, did a nice job to be able to get there and, and has continued to play in the G League and find some success uh, there with the Dallas Mavs team and now the Salt Lake City Stars. Kind of fun to have him back home. Provo High kid that you and I got to know on iProvo with Brandon Davies and Chris Collinsworth and some of the Timfew guys. Uh, Bronson Kafusi and otherwise were really fun. Kyle Collinsworth has had a tremendous career. The thing that maybe sets him apart from all of these other guys is the adversity that he overcame while he was at BYU. Yeah, who had a tour ACL among this group? Nobody, right? And he came back and he was stronger and he was better. Like, it's one thing to come back from an ACL and be a contributor and player. He got better after his ACL tear. That's hard to do. Yeah, and it happened in a West Coast Conference championship game. So that was tough because BYU was kind of in that game at the end. Kyle gets hurt. They rally for a minute, but then kind of get, get blown out after that. Yeah, you lose one of your captains, and then you saw what happened to BYU in the NCAA tournament against Oregon because Kyle was not able to play. They lose by 19. Yeah, I went to Milwaukee, Algonquin for the good land uh, for that one, and it was tough emotionally against the Ducks uh, without him. Yeah, Kyle Collinsworth. You could, I mean, there are other guys you could argue with this, but you look at what Kyle Collinsworth did. The NCAA tournaments is a big deal to me, especially because we're in a famine, if you will, a dry spell of no NCAA tournaments the last four years. It just feels like, man, going to the NCAA tournament perhaps is a bigger deal than we think. If BYU went one and done this year, I would be happy because going to the tourney is a significant benchmark for it's the next any step. NCAA tournament team not named fill-in-the-blank blue blood, right? It's been four years since BYU's been to the NCAA tournament. 
Four years. That's too long. Let's go back. Kyle Collins Maybe, got there three years. Well, you of and I went years. to the tourney, you know, recently, but BYU didn't play in it. We attended. <laughs> and you, you remember how, how much fun it was? Oh, it was so fun. Oh. It was so fun. We would play the March Madness theme right now, but we don't have the rights. So <laughs> Nobody does. The Olympic theme Just and CBS. March Madness themes are yeah. off limits, baby. I, I, oh, wait. I can't even air trumpet those? Okay, we will not. <laughs> this was a fun show. Look how good BYU basketball has had it with the individuals. Hopefully they can put it together and get back to the tourney at some point. Tournament train. Let's go. Choo-choo, baby. Our thanks to today's special guest, Greg Ravel. Okay, uh, we had no time for Dennis Pitt, even on this basketball show. Join the conversation on our all-decade team on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYU. I forget it. Is Dennis a good basketball player, Jaron? I played with Dennis, yeah. I called a foul on him one time, and he got mad at me. <laughs> and now we know why it's so petty. <laughs> it's, it was petty for him. It, it was Jaren, a foul. Spencer, shout out to Jeff Campbell. See you back in studio. Be very soon. Go Cougs.